Question 2. Word processing. A form regarding airport safety and security has been created. Open the two safety word processing document and insert your name and surname in the header. As I've said before, it's very important that you do this because this is the only way that you can be sure that the document can be traced back to you, the person who actually did it. 2.1. Insert the picture to river next to the text on the first three lines to display as follows. Okay. Note, there should be a border around the text and the picture. So usually they say ignore the picture around everything. But this time we need to do the border around everything and the border around the picture. Okay, so this is quite a challenging one because there's so many different ways to do this. So let's have a look at one or two ways. So let's just first insert the picture. Insert picture. And we'll have to make it much smaller. Okay, be careful when you make it smaller that you don't accidentally swap the direction. I saw a few of my learners do that. Okay, next we'll have to change the text wrapping so that we can put it next to it. All right. Now, if you see in the picture, it's roughly, it has to be across the three lines. So it can't be drastically smaller. It can't be drastically larger. It has to be pretty much about three lines. Okay. Let's put the border around the um, picture itself. So picture border, we're on picture tools. That's if you're working with a picture, pretty much everything you need will be on the picture toolbar. Picture border, it's a black border. Okay. And we, I'm going to change the weight to be a little bit thicker so that we can see it clearly. And then the big thing is the dashes. So that looks like a, yes, it's a round dot. We didn't actually penalize if you used a square dot, but it's the round dot one. Okay. So that looks about right to me. They didn't give me the exact measurement. So we do it as good as we can. I can probably move this a little bit closer, but it won't go that close. Right now the pick, the, the um, frame around everything is the difficult one. So we can try, let's try the first thing is just a paragraph border. We can do outside borders, but then if we, then it doesn't actually show the border around the picture as well. We can do it if we change the wrapping of the um, picture to behind, then it works. But then you also have to actually move this border for all three or this indent for all three a bit closer. So that was the one way. Okay. Another way would have probably been a table. I'm not even going to go there. Go there. Another way would be a text box. So let's just draw a big text box around everything and um, take the full out happy days. Okay. So that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it because they didn't give us instructions. So that I would think is the easiest way to actually get it done. And um, if they don't give you measurements and they just give you a visual, usually the kind of stuff you need to look at is the number of lines, but you don't need to be that specific of, I mean, how many centimeters or how many millimeters it's away from specific letters and that kind of thing. So um, they, they're not that specific. 2.2. Find the text box with the text regulations and do the following. Insert the two act PDF document into the text box to display as an icon. Ensure that when the icon is clicked, the updated document will open. Right, people, it's not this icon. Okay, these are quite cool icons. You can get really nice icons to make cool pictures. This is pretty much in the place of clip art. Okay. But this is not the way to insert a file because basically what we want to do is we're embedding a file. So to embed a file, we use insert object. Okay. An object, not the text because we want to insert the whole file just as an icon. So we create it from a file browse. And it's to act. We want it to display as an icon. 
and they said if there are changes it needs to update so then we link now just be careful you can't just automatically always click both of these you need to make sure that that's actually what the question is asking because if you click them without being asked you will actually lose a mark so make sure that is what the question is asking and that's what it was supposed to look like and when we mark we actually press this to check it's it's a code alt f9 so that we can check the field codes to see if you actually did it correctly 2.3 Find all the text where only words are underlined and replace it with the same words in a bold and italic font style. Right, this is once again one where you just have to do what the question asks and not try and interpret and think something went wrong. So, replace, find what? Format, font. Okay, underline style words only because they said only words must be underlined replace it with bold and italic now you see you can't choose bold can't choose italic separately bold italic is the option and replace all and you'll see if you did that this isn't this wasn't changed only this and this was changed for some reason this one wasn't changed don't know why but you leave it like that that's how we can actually check that you did it correctly Okay, 2.4. Find the form and make the following changes. Change the properties of the name text form field to ensure that the first letter always displays as a capital letter. All you need to do is double click and then it opens up the form field options. If only the first letter needs to display as a capital, then it's a first capital text format. Okay. Next one, add hybrid as the first option for the offense type drop down form field. So there's already one. Okay. What was it that we were supposed to add? Already forgot it. Um, hybrid. Okay, so we put in hybrid, you say add, and then you'll see that left it at the bottom, so you have to move it up to the top. Okay, now it's at the top. Now, the last one asked, add a checkbox form field for the no option. Right, now, this is very important. Please listen. On the developer tab, you'll see this is a checkbox, but it's a content control. It's not a form field. There's a difference. The form fields are in this little suitcase, the legacy tools. You'll see if I hover over this one, that is a checkbox form field. You do not get marks for anything at the top here because we don't ask that. We only ask this little first row of the legacy forms because these are form fields so it doesn't help if you do a drop down over here this is a content control drop down do you see this is a form field drop down there's a difference we only use in cat we only use the legacy form field drop downs form field content controls form field text box all of that so you had to put in a checkbox form field that's all you had to do. I know it doesn't look like the one above it, but that's what the question asked. Okay, please, you're losing unnecessary marks and it's actually a really, really simple question. 2.5. Change the paragraph that starts with the following person to display as follows. Now, I think what lots of people do is they just look at the text and they don't realize what it is they're actually supposed to change because then maybe they put in enters or something and then they think, okay, no, this is supposed to start on the next line or something like that to make it look like this. Okay. But that's not what they're asking. Okay. What they're asking is actually to make it look like this. Do you see the ruler is included in the screenshot? That's what you need to change. So we need to change the ruler. Okay, so I'm just going to select the whole paragraph, 
I'm going to change the ruler to look the same. So you'll see, if I move the left indent, so that's the bottom button, then I can drag the whole lot to one and a half. You see? If I just move the top one, that's a first line. If I move the second one, that's a hanging indent. And then the right indent is on 14, do you see? So let's move that to 14. See, so they didn't give me the measurements. They just gave me a screenshot of what the ruler should look like. And I need to be able to change the indent on the ruler. Okay, sometimes they give you the measurements. Sometimes they give you a screenshot of the ruler and you need to be able to change the indents from there. And now it does look the same. Now it wasn't necessary to put in soft enters or anything like that, or manual line break. 2.6, letters must be given to the persons at border control. Complete a mail merge as follows. Use the current document as the merge document and the two names spreadsheet as a data source. Okay, so for mail merge, we go to the mailings tab. We always ignore this group. We just start at start mail merge. If they don't tell us what it is, it's a letter. Okay, so I'm just going to save where I'm at so that I don't lose what I've done up to now. Start mail merge. They've told us what our data source is. So we say select recipients, use existing list, and we go and choose that one. It's two names. Right, they didn't tell us that there's more than one tab or more than one sheet in the spreadsheet. So I'm assuming that's the only sheet so that we're going to use that one. Happy days. Okay, now it says edit the data source recipient list. Now the fact that they're asking that means we can't go change it in the spreadsheet. We have to change it in Word. We have to actually do the filtering in Word. Okay, to include only the data of those persons that are of the age 18 years and older. Okay, so edit recipient list, you see, and we want only 18 years and older. So, oh, we can't do it here. So we're going to say advanced fields must be age greater than or equal to 18. Okay. Just a tip here, you're never going to use um, quotation marks here, hey? doesn't work if you use quotation marks. Right, 18 or older, it seems to have worked. Okay, they didn't tell us anything about sorting, so don't apply sorting if they didn't ask for sorting. Okay, we actually have to do a filter. You can't just manually go choose them. What if you had 500? You have to do a filter. So, now... Replace the text name with a merge field name and then same with surname and same with offense. So over here, there's the place where they indicated where we must include name. So I'm going to just select that and put in insert merge field name. Now, please, in this instance, it didn't actually count a mark, but you have to actually include the space. There has to be a space. There's been a paper before where it actually counted a mark that you had leave the space where there's supposed to be a space between words and offense. Uh, offense, there you go. All right. Now you can preview to check if it works, but switch the preview off again. Okay. Preview, switch off. Now it says save the document, but do not close it. Okay. That's extremely important. We save it. This one pager document, page one of one, is the one that needs to remain linked to the data source. Okay, this is our main document. This is the document that, con that remains linked to the data source. Now we have to have a second document and that's the one where we complete the merge. So complete the merge and save the merged document as to saved merge. So to safety merged. So finish and merge, edit individual documents, all, always. Okay, now you're going to see, just give it a second and you'll see how many records we have. There you go, 23. So these 23 letters you'll see 
are identical, the only difference is the name differs in the offense. So now we say file, save as. This one where we have a greater number of pages is the one that is the merged document. And this is the one that's going to have the merged added on the end. And this is the one that is not no longer linked to the data source. Okay, close. Now I'm happy, I'm going to close and you'll see it's asking me again to save. I'm going to save. Now, I just have to warn you about something that we picked up now in this exam. If you go back and you're busy with your paper again at, at the end of the um, exam and you realize, oh, let me quickly go through something. There's something I missed in question two. I just want to check that I did everything correctly. And you open to safety again. It's going to give you this command. Now, this is how we as teachers mark your paper. And we check that you use the correct data source and that you applied the correct filter. Okay. You have to say yes. So that the data source, that's that spreadsheet, is still linked to your Word document. If you say yes and you continue, yes, we, we want to update the link as well. That's fine. And that's this link. That's what it's asking. Um, and now you continue whatever you wanted to change. Now you got the border right. Or now you're busy working on the form fields. And now you save the document. Then everything will be fine because the link is still active. But the problem is, if you do this, let me show you. Oh, come on, word, close, please. Okay, never mind. If you do this, you open to safety and you actually choose no you want to break this link okay then you'll see in mailings it's not linked to your data source anymore and if you then make changes such as changing the form fields or whatever it is now you've got the find and replace right or whatever and you save this document again then when we as teachers mark it we can't award the first mark because we can't see that the merged or that your um, mail that your main document, your Word document, is actually still linked to your Excel document. So this is extremely, extremely important. If you go back to a mail merge document and you want to fix it, you actually have to choose yes. It's critical. Okay. Thanks, everyone.